All right, I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions here that somebody's asking or conversation here. I got Vince. How you doing, uh, um, Vincent? He says, uh, good job, brother. Uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, man. Started as an ISO recently. Still onboarding, waiting to get my T5. What is a T5? Is that a clearance? Must be some kind of security clearance. And any advice on what should I read while I'm waiting for my clearance? You're, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I got some stuff. What should you read if you're a new ISO waiting for your clearance? A real good reading that's going to be real relevant to what you're, what you're doing. It's going to be Risk Management Framework, which is NIST 837. Uh, I would read that one. Another one would be NIST 853, which is the security controls that you see here. Oh, okay. A T5 is higher than a secret, lower than the TS. Oh, okay, okay. NIST 837, NIST 853. Another really good one that people don't talk about is NIST 812, which is like, a, it's like a cybersecurity blanket. It just kind of goes through. Let me, let me just show you that one real quick. That's a good one too, I think, to read. Let me just see if I can find that one real quick. NIST 800-12. This one's pretty good. It's, uh, it's like a basic breakdown of just NIST security, computer security stuff. And why I like it is it has a real good um, definitions of what I'm talking about. Some of the stuff I'm, I'm saying, like sometimes we in this field will say words that, uh, you know, professional words that aren't normally, you're not, you don't use them in public or anything. It's an introduction to information security. So it's it gives you a good rundown on, and you, if anything, if nothing else, you can just keep it as a reference. Let me just show you the kind of stuff that's in here. Getting past all of the references and everything, uh, the who, who authorized it and all that, into the purpose, intended audience. Um, there's some really good stuff in here. Explanation of all the roles that you're gonna see. Those are good to kind of skim through. Like CIOs are really important that you're probably going to end up dealing with this person or their staff. And it just explains what is this, what is a CIO? What do they do? You'll, you'll learn here that the, the CIO is, is above the actual security people. Like normally you have a security office and they're underneath, directly underneath and report directly to the CIO. Stuff like that. Like what is the information owner? What is a, a senior agency information security officer and there's different names for this like it probably won't be named exactly that but you'll see the people who are very similar to this um th this is a good document but a better document is once you get through this one light reading just kind of going through it skimming through like definitions and stuff definitions like this threat and uh, vulnerabilities when overview like what is it what and see how it's referencing other documents and stuff like risk management documents and stuff like this is a good place to start that'll branch you off into other things it's it's pretty good like advanced persistent threat you know this is really really good information like th these are words that'll they'll people throw around like they won't even say advanced persistent threat they'll say apt and you'll be like what what does that mean you know <laughs> but now you'll know because you have this document that has this jargon in it and it points you in the other directions here. Those are the three documents I would I would recommend. Let me see, I've got some other folks talking to me here. Navi2000 says, um, I have, I have uh, seen a lot of Splunk. I've done incident response before and working on a CISSP and I need, I need to buy your course, thanks. Um, yeah, Splunk is really, uh, Splunk is really good stuff to get into. It pays really good, man. And then he says, uh, um, I've done incident response before. Incident response is, is pretty hot. Like, that's pretty hot stuff right there. And working on CISSP. Another option is instead of CISSP, if you find it a little bit too too pricey and too hard, it's just unnecessarily hard, man. I have a CISSP. Uh, but to be honest with you, um, get something that, CISP is awesome. 
it's awesome. But the CASP is also really good and it's equal to, I don't know that it's as hard as the CISP, but you're going to get treated the same with the CASP, I think. CISP is, is probably more widely accepted, like it's, it's, it's accepted in several different industries. But the CASP is also, is also accepted in the federal government if, if that happens to be the space you're working in. So just to kind of, just giving you more options, you know. But CISSP, like, it's definitely worth getting, man. It changed my life. I mean, it's no doubt about it.